Assalamu alaikum YouTube, this is Saeed Mirza. In today's video, I want to give some advice to those of you who are trying to learn the uh, Arabic of the Quran. And uh, this advice is geared towards those of you who grew up in Muslim households and learned how to read the Quran, not necessarily understanding what you were reading. And uh, this, uh, I'm giving this advice from this background because I was similarly uh, taught how to read the Quran at an early age. I had no clue what I was reading, but at least that was my starting point. So the first thing is to ignore the dietrical marks on the Quranic Arabic uh, text and uh, I know there's a lot of people who would disagree with me saying oh brother you need those dietrical marks for the pronunciations and you need those dietrical marks to figure out whether uh, it, the word is a subject or object or a verb um, and I understand that but here's the problem the problem is that the original the well I wouldn't say original but the earliest Quranic manuscripts that we have uh, they do not contain these dialectical marks, okay? Do you have the... Uh, oh, let me back up. So, the... If you ever, if you ever, if you ever Googled uh, ancient Quranic manuscripts, you will see that they are written in a script that is different from the current script, the Mokak script. Uh, the earliest Quranic scripts were the Kufic scripts. And the Kufic script did not have dialectical marks. You can verify this for yourself if you don't believe me just google it um i have a book it's actually a very uh, interesting book uh, beautiful book called quranic calligraphy and illumination by martin links and this uh, gentleman went around the world uh, in different museums and photographed the earliest quranic manuscripts that were that were in the museums and uh, he placed them in a chronological order and you can see clearly that the Quranic script has evolved over time and because this is an old book and uh, that is to be expected. The earliest Quran, Qurans did not have uh, uh, these dialectical marks and they were in the Kufic script and then you had an evolution to the next script and then you see these dialectical marks being added and the next script then uh, uh, morphed into uh, a bunch of other scripts. Finally, we have the Muhakkak script here. Um, so, you know, those of you who understand this know that the dietal marks were not part of the uh, earliest Quranic manuscripts because they were added later on. Now, the question is why they were added. They were added to basically enforce upon the Quran a specific pronunciation. Okay, that was the reason behind it. And uh, the secondary reason is that it allows, uh, the, uh, and it, uh, that it, it basically fossilized it, um, it preserved the, uh, the, 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 the meanings of the words in, in, in a very narrow sort of way. So I'll give you an example. You know, um, they, the, the dialectical marks not only uh, indicate to you whether the 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 word is a, um, a verb or a noun, it also indicates to you whether it's a form one verb or form two verb or form three verb. There's ten verb forms of verbs in the Quran in the Arabic language, and on top of it, the, it allows you to see whether the verb the word in question is uh, um, a subject or is an object is a doer or whether an action is being done to it okay and um, it also allows you to see whether it's an active participle or a passive participle okay so uh, th this is the function of the dialectical marks if what I said is rocket science to you it just completely went over your head don't worry about it because this is what I'm trying to tell you that you are already way above your pay grade if you will if you're trying to understand uh, if you're trying to learn the Arabic language and then you have to deal with these dialectical marks so you know in the beginning just completely ignore the dialectical marks you can come back to the dialectical marks later and uh, again the Arabic language is based on context so you don't really need these dialectical marks to figure out what the subject is of a sentence you know you already when you read the 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 the, the, the sentence and the sentence is proceeding and uh, succeeding that sentence you know what the context is so you know that engages your brain more than just simply relying on these dialectical marks that were placed on uh, the text by later um, uh, writers 
the other thing is that um, a lot of people have this uh, misconception because this has been drilled into their heads by the muftis and the saudis spe specifically that the quran can only be read in one specific way so you uh, so i have people uh, uh, email me saying brother you uh, when you recited the quran you said you didn't say allah you said allah now this sort of thinking you know it really mm, bugs me because this is the this is um i guess i'm not just i'm not built that way okay for me it doesn't really make a difference if you say you know allah or allah um it, the, the whole idea is are you understanding are you understanding is, is the meaning coming across to you we have this uh, uh, the same issue in english you know british english is different than uh, american english it's just a variation what we call accent you know, you have uh, in in British English you have uh, schedule, and in American English you have schedule. So this is the exact same issue that you know these these guys you know jump up and down about, which is irrelevant. You know, the 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 Saudis have a certain way of saying a word, and the Egyptians have a way of certain way of saying the word. So who is right? Just because you enforce these directional marks onto the text to allow for only a specific. Uh, pronunciation doesn't mean that that's what, what it was uh, originally because again the diacritical marks were added later down the line so you know um, and then you have uh, you know this this whole issue becomes just just another you know waste of time I have a good friend of mine he's um, uh, a Salafi Muslim he's a very fundamentalist and he's uh, 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 and this is why well, I guess it's an irony or contradiction, if you will, um, that even though he is fundamentalist, he doesn't know how to read Arabic, which, you know, he's trying to um, he's trying to fix. And how is he trying to fix it? Well, he's uh, um, getting help from a Pakistani uh, Qadi, okay? And a Qadi is someone who uh, knows how to recite the Quran and this Pakistani Qari is through Skype um, teaching him how to pronounce the how to how to learn Qirat of the Quran which means recitation so he's learning how to say it in the way it should be Bismillahirrahmanirrahim you know stuff like this and uh, I had a chat with him and I said what's the point man you know, you're better off spending that time trying to understand uh, the meanings of the words and learning Arabic as in what does the, what does this language mean? What's the point of pronouncing it in a certain, you know, correct manner? But anyway, you know, that's what his thinking is. What I'm trying to tell you is that this stuff is uh, irrelevant. What's relevant and what's, what's actually important is that you understand the meanings of the words and the grammatical rules and be able to learn to read and understand the Arabic language that's what it's about and uh, you know I, I hope that those people who are listening to my channel are of that mindset so okay now all of this uh, uh, I guess background aside let's talk about learning the Arabic language of the Quran um, the first thing uh, it was again that you should ignore the dietical marks the second thing is that uh, you should get a copy of Brother Garen's translation of the Quran, the Quran and Complete Revelation. And uh, the reason I say that is because uh, his uh, the layout of his translation is actually very conducive for someone who is just trying to learn the Arabic language of the Quran. Because what he has done is he has, first of all, it's a very literal translation. Uh, so it's word for word, uh, unlike Muhammad Asad, who, you know, if it's a five word uh, worse, he's going to translate it into 10 words because, you know, whatever. Anyway, so here's uh, with with, with uh, Brother Gans translation, what he's done is a very literal translation. So on average, you're going to see the same exact words in, you know, so if it's a five word uh, worse, you're going to see five words translation, you know. So you what it allows you to do is it allows you to pick out 
specific words and their translations right off the bat, okay? Because what helps you is that the translation uh, is side by side with the Arabic text. So you have the Arabic text on the left and you have the English translation on the right. And then what he has done more is that he has broken down the verses into lines. So this kind of keeps you on the straight and narrow and you are able to pick apart words. I mean, for instance, you know, in the first uh, verse of the first surah, you have Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and uh, Brother Gans would translate it as uh, um, uh, Bism in the name Allah, God, Ar-Rahman, the Almighty, Ar-Rahim, the Merciful, okay? And so th you already learned uh, Allah means God, Ar-Rahman means Almighty, and Ar-Rahim means Merciful. And what it allows you to do is because the Quran repeats itself so many times, these words show up so many times that you're building up your vocabulary. You really need to build, build up your vocabulary uh, because then that'll help you understand the grammatical constructs and you'll understand, you know, uh, how the patterns of the words work. So that's what that allows you to do. So, uh, you know, at this point, all you're trying to do is you're trying to get acclimatized to the Arabic language and you're building up your vocabulary. And as you proceed, as you keep, uh, because you're not even reading at this point, you're really looking at and, and observing those patterns and their, their um, companion patterns in English, right? Because that's what words are. Words are just patterns of letters. So that's what you're trying to do. And you understand that this specific pattern, Allah, is translating to God in English. And this is the way you should be learning. It's a process of just com constantly reading and analyzing. Okay? That works much better than you opening up a book with a bunch of rules about grammar and, uh, you know, learning vocabulary, long vocabulary lists. Uh, because even if you try learning it, you'll forget it. You have to keep this going repetition 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 that's what learning is guys anyway so once you're done with that once you're doing this you should then start in parallel to uh, build up your knowledge of grammar and uh, in that regard uh, i've used a lot of courses um, bought a lot of books and i've gone through them and i didn't really find them that helpful so i'm not going to mention it two books i found helpful that i do want to mention uh, the first book is uh, called uh, the Learning Arabic Language of the Quran. Uh, it's published by Darussalam Salam Institute and it's written by Izzat Urusa. This is a good primer, okay, because what this person has done is that they have gone through the Quran, picked out the Quranic verses and is translating them and giving you um, something to work with as far as, you know, masculine, plural, feminine, singular, past tense, present tense. But it, they, they stick with the Quran's Arabic. Um, because we're interested in learning the Quran's Arabic, let's be honest, you know, I'm not going to go and chat with some Arab in the Middle East. What I'm interested in is what the Quran, uh, how the Quran is using the Arabic language. So this is a really good book. I mean, this is a good primer. It's simple to understand. It's easy. I would definitely recommend that you buy it and study it. Once you get comfortable, you go through this book and you understand most of the concepts. You don't have to understand everything, but at least you get, you, you feel like you, you know, you have something to work with. Then I would recommend you buy this other book. And this book is called Arabic to the Quran. It's by uh, Alan Jones. He's a professor uh, of Arabic. And it's published by the Islamic Text Society. This is a great book. It's a little bit more advanced, but uh, it'll allow you to uh, gain a deeper understanding of the Arabic language of the Quran. Again, he uses the Quran. Uh, he translates it and tells you why certain, uh, you know, why why the word is being used in this manner, why it's being translated in a certain manner, and what are the special functions for some of the words like Ghana, you know, that's a special word, that sort of thing. So, you know, these two books, they'll keep you busy for the next year or two years. Uh, learning a language is not something you can just, you know, s master in a couple of weeks or months. It takes years of diligent study. Uh, at the same time, you should be reading the Quran and, uh, you know, seeing those concepts that you learn in these books being applied and that way you remember them and at the same time you're building up your vocabulary so th that's the way that i went about it and uh you know uh, i was able to make quick progress uh, even though for the first i think year i was pretty stunted in my progress because i was using some courses the madina course was one i that i i, I tried to learn arabic through and i just didn't make sense to me even though i spent i think three four months on it 
So, and then I watched some YouTube videos of people and that was pointless too. You really want to sit down and study a book. At least for me, that worked. So hopefully, uh, God willing, you can, uh, you know, get on, um, start your journey of learning the Arabic language, the Quran. I do, I do believe it's important that you learn the Arabic language of the Quran and be able to read the Quran unfiltered and unadulterated, uh, you know, directly. Um, you're not going to make any earth shattering, uh, um, insights. At least I haven't yet obviously there have been some times where i looked at when i when i studied the arabic and i studied the translator i realized this translator is not has a different viewpoint to what i have and uh, it does allow you access into looking at specific meanings and seeing the shades of meanings and seeing how the quran is uh, in, in a surah how that how a specific root is being um hammered home so you understand, so that concept is being sort of opened up and, you know, kind of uh, explained to you. So in that regard, it is helpful. Um, so in that, um, so I do, I do believe there is some value to it. Uh, but all I'm saying is that don't get caught up on uh, the uh, specifics, dialectical marks or specific functions or anything that has, that's very specific that you don't understand, confusing. Forget it. Just move on, uh, you know, get a broad understanding and then you can come back and spend time on a specific uh, problem that you're having and find answers to that. Anyway, that's uh, it for now. Um, I'm just going, I'm working on my book. So God willing, I will have an update on that uh, uh, pretty soon. I hope everyone is doing fine. Uh, until the next time, peace and blessings from me. Salaamu Alaikum.